Hello everyone, this is Jason Spears with DrPremed.com and I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to do, what is it, when people go to the store and they go shopping, they record their hauls or whatever. This is a little bit different because I received something in the mail, as you can tell, by this package. I'm about to open it up and let's see what we got here. Let's see if I can open this. You can see that it hasn't been opened before and I'm going to see what we have. It's actually from Next Step Prep, their test company that does uh, testing for the MCAT or so. And I know the MCAT is very important. I preach how you guys need to take the MCAT very seriously. And one company I work with is Next Step Test Prep. And I'm just taking a look at everything that I have in here. It's like, wow, this is a lot. Okay, so I'm looking over this invoice and it looks like it has everything that we need for our MCAT prep this year. And look at the total weight on this. 29 pounds. I could lift weights with that for sure. But taking a look, let's see what we have actually inside of here. We got a lot of textbooks. Okay, so this is a textbook for MCAT physics and math. And look at that, over a thousand practice problems. That can definitely keep us busy today. And yeah, I totally see these review problems. Definitely things I do not miss now that I'm in medical school. So that's a good as math. I don't use too, too much. There's some things I do, but not on a regular basis. Maybe more when I'm doing anesthesia or PEDS and I got to do the the uh, the patients there because you got to do everything on their body weight so that takes a little bit more and then look at this book the MCAT chemistry and organic chemistry I know that's somebody's favorite subject there so we'll just take a look at that flip through the pages I'm sure you guys remember all of this good times there look at that kinetics and equilibrium okay oh look at that angles of torsion I remember that the chairs and moving what was it those models and moving the electrons into different configurations and all of that good stuff and Newman projection so this is taking me down nostalgia because I'm a fourth year med student so it's been a very long time since I've seen some of this chemistry all right we got another book in here what do we got here looks like biology and biochemistry now here's something I tell students when I started medical school um, the biochemistry wasn't something that you necessarily needed to take. In a lot of schools, it was really optional, like, okay, do it if you want to get ahead. But nowadays, I would say if you're pre-med, I would say I would strongly encourage you to take biochemistry before you um, start medical school. So let's see what they have in here. Let's, okay, evolution. Yeah, good stuff there. Genetics. What is this? Okay, well, this is... I'm planning on going into OB guidelines. So this looks very familiar to uterus, Philippian tube. And actually, I was just reading an article today where they were stating that um, for ovarian cancer, they're finding that the Philippian tube right here is actually one um, source of those cancers. So in those patients, they're telling them that actually we're thinking about having them remove their um, Philippian tube because usually we would just keep that when we do some of our hysterectomies and other gynecological procedures. But because of the... Um, risk that it proposes to certain patient populations. We're now telling them to remove the Philippian tube as well. Okay, look at that. So yeah, there's a lot in here. Good set of questions. All right. What else do we have? Oh, this is something new. For all of those after 2015, you're going to have to do your psychology and sociology on the MCAT. So this is good to have this book here. I'm sure that's going to coming very, very handy. Now, when I was an undergrad, I was a political science major, so I didn't do all science in undergrad, but I took a sociology class my um, first, my freshman year. I took some anthropology and some other stuff because I went to a liberal arts college. So we did a little, little bit of that. Look at this. There's a picture of a person with schizophrenia. Okay, a self-portrait or so. All right, that's definitely, the, oh, they have the different types of schizophrenia. That's nice. That's stuff that you definitely need when you're in medical school. So this is good. I like seeing this. And this psych psychology thing, the personality orders are perfect. This is the same things that you find in your board review stuff when you have to do that for medical school and when you want to start your third year or your clinical rotation. So the stuff that you guys are learning now is 
things that you're going to see in medical school. So don't think, why do I have to learn this? What's the point? It's all going to come in handy. And look at this. As, as I said, they said it's a 29-pound book. I can definitely see that because look at this. Here's another one, Science Q book. So you have 2,000 questions here. Physics, near chemistry, looks like. So this is probably, yep, it goes through all the sections, psychology, biochemistry. So this is a, wow, this is a lot in here, I think. I would be happy if I had all of this when I was studying for my MCAT or so. But yeah, all of these questions, I'm going to look at that. So I'm just going to look at this, yep. Definitely need to know this because one of the things in medical school and medicine is you need to know your biochemistry and physiology. That's one of the core um, pieces of medical school and basic science knowledge. You need to do that. And look what we have here. This is telling us simulate the test day with a time section and practice for chemistry and physics. So let's see what we have in here. Okay, this is, looks like time um, test questions, passage. This looks like the explanations of things. And yeah, this is, wow, there's a lot in here, okay. So these are like what they would call the discrete questions that aren't related to a passage. And is this one, yep, this is a passage explanation. So let's see what happens if we go to the front. Sorry that I'm scrolling so fast. I just want to kind of get over, get through everything that's in this book. Okay, PTH, endomen degradation. All right, that's definitely organic chemistry. I remember that from a long time ago. Uh, oh, those disulfide bridges. Yep, you see that. Okay. Oh, yeah, physics. Not fun at all, but definitely got to do it. And it's interesting. One of my buddies from undergrad, actually, he was my physics partner in um, undergrad. He went on to medical school. Now he's actually an orthopedic surgeon, and he, he enjoyed the physics more than me, which obviously you need to do for when you're putting in those um, plates and putting those screws and rods in the bones. You kind of need to know the angles and um, the physics, how much... Um, pressure you're going to do with everything with that. Obviously I'm not speaking too technical because I'm at a loss for words, but yeah, that's what you need. So this is some more next step test prep materials. And this is going over critical analysis and reading strategies and practice skills. So that's going to help you figure out actually how you're going to answer these questions, what the author's main idea is on that. I know a lot of students struggle with that. I actually have a technique that I need to share with everybody on how you can do really well on your college section of your MCAT. So just taking a look at these problems, look at that. How would the author likely characterize Beethoven's style? And so we have some four options here. I didn't even read the passage, so I'm not even gonna go through and try to answer the question. But I would probably start from the bottom and work my way up. And, you only have so much working memory, so as soon as you think an answer choice is wrong, cross it out because you don't need it. And that's what I would do for that. So those were timed. All right, we're almost getting to the bottom of this passage. And here we go. This is simulate test day, so biology and biochemistry. Take a look at that. I have some more questions here. What is this? Carriers, Queen Victoria. Or where is hemophilia? Okay, yep, that's definitely something you need to know for medical school too. So you guys are definitely learning the stuff that you need for both levels. And what is this? Oh, Alzheimer's, this is good. I see an Alzheimer's question here. And which part of the brain that you need to know? What? Okay, things have changed since when I took. Okay, which of the fouling vessels is blood pressure most likely to be the highest? And, <clears throat> This is something you learn in medical school, but um, it's going to be your aorta because that's got to take blood to the rest of your body. I was actually talking to a pre-med student about this recently, and they were talking about a retrograde catheterization, and I was saying that's not something that you typically do. And I then went to explain why when you are drawing blood, why do they draw from your veins and not your arteries or anything like that? And one of the reasons is because of the pressure and... <clears throat> excuse me, found in a different vasculature. Whereas if you would puncture a order or put a hole in it, 
The blood's going to travel at approximately 210 miles per hour. So that's when you puncture it. The blood squirts all the way across the room. Now, obviously, if you go and you're trying to put um, <clears throat> a venal puncture, you're not going to see blood squirting all the way across the room because that's a low-pressure system there. So that kind of explains that for you if you guys are just curious about that. And so kind of see how that all comes into play. With that, so we're going over some chemistry, biochemistry, biology from next step test prep. I'm kind of relating it to what you're going to see when you're in medical school. So this is all really relevant. Here's another psychology and sociology um, simulate test day. Secondary socialization with post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, you want to use sertraline. That's one of the drugs that we administer for people who have that. And look at that. They're even telling you more than what I would ever expect that you guys to learn. But <clears throat> that's great. <clears throat> oh, okay. That's awesome. Okay. Novelty seeking. This is just, I'm just going through this. This is kind of like a little bit of Christmas for me to kind of see what's out there. In regard to the MCAT and speaking to pre-med students and they tell me all the stuff that they're expected to know. So this is great. Alright, so just flipping through that. Okay, it looks like we got to the bottom of this and you can see there's a pretty big box. Okay, and so this is an MCAT verbal pra practice um, for the car section. So let's see what we got here. Okay, we have some questions and we have a passage. Everything there. This is good stuff. This is everything you definitely need to know. I have a stack of books that's extremely high. We take a look at that. This is what we have going on right here. And so I'm working with Next Step Test Prep and this is great that you guys are gonna have access to all of this and I keep preaching that you need to do well in the MCAT as one of my physician MD mentors told me the MCAT a test you want to take once and only once so you guys need to give it your all and just know the end goal is to get into medical school earn your white coat ultimately become a physician and take care of patients and so you need to do very very well on the MCAT and I'm a strong proponent of you taking a diagnostic practice MCAT. The reason I want you to do that is so you can get a baseline where your performance is, what you know, what you don't know, and kind of then go there and strategize how you're going to approach the MCAT because you want to start off with your weakest subject areas first and then work your way through that and just stay the stuff that you know better for the end because students have a tendency to do things that feel good do things that they know and what does that mean you do the easier problems the easier topics but then when you get in and you take the actor mcat it's going to have everything on there so you need to make sure that you're covering all your bases and you're well-rounded and you know everything that you need to know for the mcat and again this is jason with drpremed.com talking to you a little bit about my box unveiling from next step test prep they have a lot of resources i want to plug you guys into them i have some partnerships with them coming up and some give giveaways and other things i want to do for you guys to make sure you have success when you go ahead and you take your mcat exam so again jason with drpremed.com and all the material you see here are from my friends at next step test prep and that's definitely something you guys need to check out if you're preparing for the mcat just to give you that competitive advantage because getting into medical school is extremely difficult and so i want all the best for you and so that's why i'm going to be talking a lot about the mcat giving you a lot of tips and advice and really talking it up because you really need to do well on it again jason and take care